Okay. Okay, darkness. Darkness, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was talking actually quite on the to topic of darkness. I was talking, um, try not to break anonymity. I was talking to an individual during the week and it was quite interesting. These two people were having this, and they were good friends, having the same thing happen to them. It would seem like some kind of um, luciferic, I call it, I'll, I'll, I'll describe what I mean. Like there, there's for me what I call demonic attack and there is what I call luciferic attack. Uh, I think this was more along the lines of the luciferic. So it's like they're, both their brains got scrambled and they were finding it very hard to discern things. Mm. And, they, and it happened to both of them, they're, they're good friends. And um, so nowadays, um, I mean, Hawkins says that you can more or less intuit and reverse engineer karma just by uh, just guess, guessing, put it this way, guessing. And, uh, and it's like their ability for spiritual discernment and they got really muddled up. Uh, and I, I was listening, and it was really interesting. Uh, and and I, I intuited, and I can be wrong, I mean, this is just my best guess, but you know, many, many spiritual seekers, especially advanced spiritual seekers, have had many lifetimes in spiritual groups over and over again, you know, like I might have been in a Buddhist group one lifetime, I might have been in, I don't know, Hare Krishna group another time, and I might have been in some of the darker groups, you know, uh, some of the cult type groups. And uh, so I just, it just came to, to mind, and I thought, okay, well, I suspect that they had both been in the same spiritual group, and this just came to my mind, they'd both been in the same spiritual group, and it wasn't an integral spiritual group, it was probably a cult. And the thing that was coming up was a lack of ability to spiritually discern and get muddled up was coming up. So I guess, uh, so I thought, oh, it sounds like the, uh, the two of you were in the same spiritual group, which was probably a cult, and you were probably rec <coughs> recruiting people and messing up their spiritual clarity. Because uh, cults um, on the darkness side, I mean, what cults do, which is very, very clever, is they tell you some spiritual truth. Uh, and they hook you in with some spiritual truth, like love your neighbour or whatever it is. And that sounds pretty good, like we're all going to love our neighbour in this group. Uh, but then, later on, they, they say some things which are spiritually out of context, but you can't really get it because you're not spiritually aware enough, or the, 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 the person, is, uh, the leader is charismatic or something and brainwashes them. So. So it seemed like they were both, and, and they had now, and I suspected, you know, it, what it does is it leaves a vulnerability in the chakras. It leaves a vulnerability. So if I was part of a group in a past lifetime, and the thing was to get naive spiritual seekers in, and then to brainwash them in the cult format, then what I've done is I've messed uh, with their, you know, what was happening, it seemed like they were being attacked on the third eye. Uh, the, 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 the spiritual discernment. So, I, so, and some kind of energy seemed to be discombobulating them, both of them. So I just sort of said, like, the things I probably do is I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's misled spiritual seekers in a past lifetime and keep doing that prayer. I then also intuited, because I, I had once, really, uh, after I got my kidney failure, I was working in the stock market and I, hadn't, I wasn't spiritual, I was in active addiction. I once had like a, what I felt was a demonic entity come into my room and uh, you know, I woke up, I don't know if I was awake, but it was like something of pure terror and nightmarish energy was in the room and it was like I was frozen in terror and I realised it was something horrific um, and, uh, and I was reading, you know, there was a, I wasn't into much advanced, it was very new into spiritual, I had near death spiritual experience. Uh, which was the message, you know, to seek spirituality. So I didn't know where. And in the early days, I was going to all kinds of places on my spiritual exploration before I found the Course, before I found Hawkins. And I was reading, uh, there's a famous English author, some time back, she died somewhere, her name was Betty Shine. And she was a famous healer in the UK and had written a lot of books. And I was reading her books. And I got into correspondence with her and I was, get, I was getting mail from her and giving her large donations. And... Um, so this demonic thing was, I just said, Betty Shine. I just called her name and it vanished in a split second. So that was my only thing I could call. She was my teacher, light, light worker, if you like, that I did, and it vanished. So, 
those type of things, um, the vulnerability, uh, you know, I, I had, because uh, I was in a lot of dark, I was in addiction, so I had a lot of darkness. And so I was resonating, and so these dark things can come. I think as well, with these two individuals, you know, if you're affiliated with groups or families, there can be collective, um, collective things which might be out in the, in the chakras uh, in a family level or in a group scenario. And if these vulnerabilities are a certain type, uh, they can lead to either a luciferic attack or demonic attack, depending on how, how severe the error was that uh, one, one indulged in. Or it might, you know, I suspect these two people, they were naive. They probably got pulled into a cult and were naively pulling other people into the cult. But there is, there is a karmic, um, uh, even if you do things inappropriately, karmically, there still is some karma to pay off, even if you're not fully aware of it. So I suspected. And the other thing I said to them was, you know, I heard Hoka Hoka say this. It's like, you know, a lot of the luciferic and demonic entities have turned their back on God. You know, and that therefore the the only joy they can get is making spiritual seekers miserable and trying to pull spiritual seekers off the path. In a way, they're jealous and envious of people who are getting, you know, trying to get to the light. And so, if they can sort of pull you down or sort of mess with you, that's the only kind of joy. And I thought, well, when I sort of see it that way, I f you know, I felt like kind of compassion for these uh, spirits. I said, try and have compassion for this thing that keeps coming and trying to. Because the only joy, and I thought, like, send it a message to, to um, what is it, to relinquish, um, yeah, relinquish their turning back on God, to, to, to accept the light of God again, because they've turned their back on the light. And so they can only get, mm -hmm. they can only get sustenance through the dark means, you know, tormenting spiritual seekers or pulling them or terrorizing them. And, you know, some of their joys to pull someone who's on the path of light down uh, through various mechanisms. So I thought, well, if you can have compassion for it, uh, it can't really, it's only if you, you know, one of the great things I heard with uh, Hawkins uh, was, I mean, you can only be attacked where you have a vulnerability. You can't be, like, attacked if you have no vulnerability in an area. So um, if, you then, if you then clean up that area in which you're vulnerable, any luciferic or, or satanic entity can't come in. Uh, or if you hold light, I mean, of course, if you're fearful of them, they can come in on the fear. Um, yeah, if you, um, so that's one of the things with that. So that's on the luciferic and uh, demonic attacks. Uh, the, what I mean by luciferic is luciferic, I mean, like demonic, I think we all know demonic is like the real horror, horror stuff and the terror stuff and, uh, and the grim stuff. Luciferic is um, clever, cleverness. Cleverly pulling um, <clears throat> you down through um, saying something that sounds good but is not right. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, it's more like, it's more like intelligent, intelligently uh, misleading, intelligently misleading, whereas the uh, the satanic is more like uh, the gruesome stuff. So, if you're vulnerability, um, the other thing to do is to pray. You can pray to the Holy Spirit or pray to God for a miracle that whatever is out, whatever the spiritual lesson is that needs to be learned, be revealed to you and keep praying. And then it can be the thing that, uh, that you need to learn or pray around will just pop into your mind at some point. And so you know the lesson, like the lesson is um, uh, you know, not to mislead if you're in a spiritual group. Okay, the thing with um, uh, family dynamics, so on a different level, darkness, <coughs> yeah, you know, if you're in a family and there, there can be all kinds of dark patterns or limited patterns that you're indoctrinated with in the family, and some of them might be quite dark. <clears throat> you know, so if, if the, some of them are quite dark, then you could say there's darkness being transmitted and shared, a sort of a shared collective belief systems of darkness or limiting programs. That might not be, any, it might not feel like anything luciferic or satanic attacking you. So then um, the, the way to do that, I mean, you know, one is to sort of see, um, 
if there's a family pattern, like I have a lot of stuff with money and finances, my father has the same issues with money and finances. So for me then, it's a family pattern of uh, greed and stinginess. Uh, greed and stinginess, which is some of my things, uh, and my father's as well. So that's some of the family karma. Maybe we wouldn't call it dark, but it's still uh, relatively dark, mild, mildly dark, uh, greedy, stingy. Um, so then I, I can clear it from myself. Uh, I cancel my belief in stinginess and greed. I'm an infinite being. I can also say God did not create stinginess and greed in my father, so it is not real. So I'm now clearing the darkness of that belief system in myself and in my father. And also, if I think it's a collective belief system that's gone on for family generation after family generation and is in the, all the family, then, you know, I can, I can uh, cancel my own belief, I can cancel the, the, um, the, uh, the family belief, I can I cancel the ancestral belief um, <clears throat> in stinginess and uh, greed, greed or hoarding. So I can try in that by shifting those because to, to relate it to A Course in Miracles, Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles says uh, God did not create, it says be specific and it says some of the belief systems that we hold are our personal belief systems and some of them are the collective belief systems. But you can also clear your personal, like I believe in, uh, I don't know, like uh, inflamed toe Cancer, God did not create. But also, some of these are collective belief systems or family belief systems. You can say, God did not create them, or I cancel my belief in them. And in that way, you're clearing uh, these dark beliefs out of yourself and the family. Um, so that's the way to do it. Or if you see darkness in yourself or others, you can clear it. God did not create it, so it's not real. Again, I really like what the Course says on it, be specific. And if you don't know specifically what the darkness is, just pray, pray to the Holy Spirit for a miracle that, uh, that it be revealed in truth uh, what the thing is that needs to be discerned and, and cancelled or God did not create it. And what will happen if you keep doing that, at some point it will just suddenly pop in your mind. It's probably this. Oh, I better cancel this or say God did not create it. It's not real. And you'll wash out that uh, thing. Quite often, it's, I think 99% of the time it's obvious what's going wrong. Sometimes you might be like cloudy, I'm not sure exactly what to cancel, what not to do. And then just pray for a miracle that will be revealed to you, and then it will pop in, and then you can cancel and delete that. So sometimes there might be multiple programs, but if you clear one program, one limiting belief, then the others will become apparent as you do it. And if you can't know specifically, then you can do a general one. I don't know, like a general one might be like, God did not create financial insanity in my family. And so it's not real. And then as you do financial insanity, suddenly you realize, oh, actually, there is a, an aspect of stinginess. There's an aspect of hoarding. Uh, there's an aspect of greed. And then you can cancel the smaller ones that become apparent after you've done a general one uh, to current, you know, the little segments that uh, are creating darkness. So, um, so anything else on the shadow? So there's the personal shadow, there's the group shadow, and there's the collective shadow. There's a family shadow, there's also ancestral, what's gone on before. And you can clear that as well. You know, God did not create uh, financial sanity in me, my current family and my ancestors. And therefore it is not real. You know, and you, as you keep doing it, what you're doing. And the, the Course actually talks about it, like, you know, it tells you to do it repeatedly. You know, because, and it sort of says it in there somewhere, like, you're weakening those, you can you understand, every time you do it, you weaken that thing and you're clearing it from your consciousness and from the collective consciousness as well. So in truth there is no me and you but we are, if there is a me clearing my stuff I'm also clearing it from the collective. If everything was cleared from the collective then there would be no separation and there would be no duality, there'd be no world because uh, we'd be all be off in the infinite because the illusion can only occur if separation exists. Uh, and for separation to exist, there must be at least two separate individuals. If there was no separation in the illusion of separation, then there wouldn't be a separated world, because we'd be off in, in, the, in the oneness. Okay. So, thank you. Um,